Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Angel and I enjoy talking about everything from influencers to weird internet trends to deep dives and pretty much anything else I want to talk about. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It does really help out my teeny tiny channel. And if not, that is totally fine. Let's get into today's video. If you are by chance here from my TikTok, then you've probably already seen the TikToks that I've made about Love is Blind. And obviously we know how sketchy production can be sometimes, and there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that we don't know about. And I did not realize until this season how sketchy Love is Blind actually is, and we need to talk about it. So Danielle Rules TikTok came across my For You page today. If you don't know who that is, have you watched Love is Blind? Danielle Rule is one of the cast members from season two who ended up, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the season by now, Danielle was one of the few couples that ended up getting engaged and getting married to Nick Thompson. And she had a lot to say in this TikTok. So I'm going to play the full TikTok here and then we're going to talk about it afterwards. So you may have seen this article by now and I wanted to touch on a few things. First, the psycho bell. There was a 30 minute screening with a psychologist in where I talked about my past and current mental experiences as well as my past suicide attempts and traumas. And it ended with, well, it sounds like you're okay now. So looking back, I probably shouldn't have agreed to go on the show and I really wish I was more educated and self-aware at the time, but I also did trust that the psychologist would not choose people that they did not deem mentally fit. And because of the premise of Love is Blind, like I actually thought it was going to be different. So during the show, the producers were constantly bringing up past traumas in order to break you down emotionally and get the reaction that they wanted. And I also thought that the things that I disclosed in the psych eval were confidential. Reliving these things every single day was, was tough. Next, I wanna talk about Mexico. So Nick and I were about to head out to the couple's party, but last second they said that I couldn't go because they thought I had COVID, which was weird to us because we had been together 24 seven. And Nick could see my anxiety already starting to boil up. So he asked the producers to leave someone there with me that I had trusted, that didn't happen. So I got in my head even more wondering why they actually didn't want me to go, as well as thinking about whether or not I disclosed too much too soon to Nick about some very sensitive subjects. So that's when I had a full blown panic attack and went into the closet because I was scared that they were hitting cameras. When Nick got back, I refused to be filmed. I refused to be mic'd because I was still hyper anxious. And they sent Nick in mic'd because he'd, he had no idea what was going on so that they could pick up my voice. Nick realized what had actually happened and also that I was alone the entire time. He actually took off his mic and threw it at producers saying, we are done, you're not exploiting us anymore, let us leave. I then told them that I had tried committing suicide in the past, that I wasn't trusting myself, that I was having suicidal ideations and that I had to go home. Right after I said that, everyone from production, the crew, ran over to try and persuade us to stay, but no therapist. So constantly have in the back of your head the $50,000 fine, whether or not they'd enforce it. I really wish that they would have just let me leave in Mexico because not only did that impact my mental health moving forward throughout the entire experience, but Nick's experience as well. And after filming, I was in such a dark place that it not only impacted Nick, but every single person that cares about me. After filming, I did decide to take a leave of absence from work to attend an outpatient trauma therapy, but I mean, I'm still struggling. I might get sued for this, but I really just hope that it teaches Kinetic to treat their contestants as human beings. And I also hope that it helps viewers give contestants more grace when they're watching. I often get asked why some people say that they had a positive experience. And one, your experience is highly dependent on how ethical your producer is. Two, there are a lot of people who do benefit from the relationships that they have with Kinetic and Netflix, and I can't blame them for that. But the thing that wasn't mentioned is that while in Mexico, the only way we could get room service was through our TVs. Day two, our TVs were disconnected. There are bodyguards outside of the hotel room to make sure you don't leave. Luckily, we had a swimming pool and were able to make friends with the people within the swimming pool in order to get food and water. And there's so much more. I just think this situation is so incredibly sad as someone who struggles with mental health every single day. Being in a situation that's compromising your mental health and not being able to leave is extremely detrimental to your mental health. So I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, well, why didn't they just leave? It's not like production was physically keeping them there. They probably could have left at any time. 
And while that is correct, unfortunately, in their contract, there is a $50,000 fine if you leave without the producers approving it. So yes, they could have left, but they also would have owed them $50,000 in liquidated assets. I had also already assumed that they were getting paid to be on the show and probably made an extra bonus if they made it to the altar and said yes. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, well, they probably made enough to pay off that $50,000. And I was so wrong. A former cast member by the name of Jeremy Hartwell, who didn't get engaged, so he was probably just one of the background characters or NPCs, as I like to call them. They're just, they're to help talk the other people through what they're thinking. He filed a lawsuit on behalf of all of the cast members that were in his season, as well as any other production crew that wasn't as high up as the producers, if that makes sense. So this lawsuit included um, a little over 100 people and accused the streaming service and the production company of subjecting its cast to inhumane working conditions and poor wages for an insane schedule. So production labeled them all as independent contractors to get around labor laws, as well as having to pay them at least minimum wage and overtime. All of the cast members got paid $1,000 per week, but it had a cap of eight thousand dollars. So according to the lawsuit, as well as many other cast members who have come out, allegedly they would work up to 20 hour days and had a 10 day filming period straight. So if you do the math, that pretty much comes out to $7.14 an hour, which if you're going to be on TV, that's really low. That was a lot less than I was expecting them to make. Allegedly, the lawsuit claims That production had complete domination over when the cast slept, ate, and communicated with the outside world, including leaving them alone without access to food and a phone for hours at a time. The only drinks that were provided on a regular basis was alcohol, and water was strictly limited to the cast only during the day. In one of my TikToks, I had talked about a few things that I think would make the Love is Blind seasons better in the future, one of them being forcing less alcohol on them. Or I guess at this point, I didn't know that they were forcing alcohol on them, but making alcohol less accessible. So that way they could be a little bit more sober. But this lawsuit and a lot of cast members that have come out speaking out against Love is Blind have pretty much insinuated that allegedly Netflix would really only provide them alcohol. So that's all they would drink. And that's why they're drinking so much, which honestly, it makes a lot of sense. As of filming, I don't believe that there is any kind of resolution to this lawsuit, but Netflix has come out and said that all of the claims are allegedly false and they don't know what the motive is for Jeremy filing this claim, but wishes him the best. A little sus, but we'll see what happens. Another cast member has actually come out to speak out against Love is Blind as well by the name of Brianna Holmes. I believe Brianna Holmes was from season one, and she claims that she had a panic attack on set, tried leaving to go back to the trailer, which if you thought they slept in that cute little apartment that they engage in, you would be wrong. Um, But when she tried to leave to go to the trailer, she was chased down by production and all of the crew members with cameras in her face. So she didn't get any kind of alone time to just reset herself and calm down. So speaking of the trailer, let's talk about their sleeping quarters. Now, obviously the girls and guys sleep separately. So when I say 15 men and 15 women, I'm talking about 15 men and 15 women separately, not together. So, you know, in between the pods, they're all hanging out in that cute, like, living room area, and there's rooms off to the side. There's a whole kitchen. I was under the impression that that's where they slept, but that is not where they sleep. Apparently, allegedly, in the first season, they had them sleeping in single room trailers with bunk beds. All of the 15 men and 15 women were sleeping in one tiny trailer Not that they were sleeping for long, as we know, they had 20-hour filming days, 
but that pretty much means that they had no time to themselves whatsoever. Allegedly, the trailers were really dirty and they found bugs all of the time too, so the season one cast members did put up a fight about it and eventually the production crews put the next seasons in hotels nearby. Which sounds like a much better deal, and technically I guess it kind of is, but if you think about it, who knows how close those hotels actually were, so traveling back and forth was probably cutting into their sleep time, so honestly at this point, no matter where they're sleeping, they're still not getting enough sleep, and they're not going to be comfortable. Now, taking all of that into consideration, it honestly makes a lot of sense now why Tiffany fell asleep during her and Brett's date. Honestly, when I saw that episode, that's me. I can fall asleep anywhere, anytime. And I was like, man, I hope Brett doesn't give up on her just (laughs) because she accidentally fell asleep. Now let's talk about their contracts. So one thing that I mentioned earlier was that if they leave the show without approval from the producer in their contract, they will be fined $50,000 in liquidated assets. But there's also a few other things in their contract that I also want to bring up. According to the Reddit page r slash love is blind on Netflix, one of the threads talks about the cast members being contractually obligated. I hope I said that word right to actually follow through with going to the altar once they get to a certain point, which after reading through the thread, allegedly, once you get to the honeymoon, you pretty much have to go to the altar unless you get some kind of approval, which kind of makes me question how Jackie and Marshall were able to break up. Because as far as I can remember, I really think they're the only ones who didn't make it up all the way to the altar in the four seasons that have been aired. But I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. But allegedly, once they get to that point, they are obligated to get to the altar and make their decision there. So even if they talk about it beforehand and decide that they're going to say no, they still have to go through with it and go to the altar. Now, this one's just kind of silly and I had to throw this one in there. But do you guys remember Andrew? I believe it was from season three who in one of his interviews, the producers were asking him if he was sad and he grabbed a bottle of eye drops and was like, hang on a second and put the eye drops in his eye and then started fake crying. Are you rolling? Hang on. It's too much. It didn't feel good, to be completely honest. I guess I feel, I feel satisfied that I went for it. That guy? God, I hated him. He has come out to say that he's not allowed to talk about that situation per his contract. So after reading through some of the Reddit threads, I believe it has to do something with coming out and talking about things that make the show look unauthentic. But I just think he was unauthentic himself. So maybe he's just using that as a scapegoat to not talk about what an idiot he was. Another thing that I wonder about a lot is how the divorces work because obviously there is another option and that's an annulment. Now, I'm going to be honest, before reading through all of this, I had no idea what the difference was between a divorce and an annulment. But you know what a divorce is. Basically, an annulment is the person that they were marrying could have lied. In an interview that I had read online, They were interviewing a lawyer from New York who said that he had seen someone deal with a case where a girl was talking to a guy from a different country online. He was a different religion than she was. She wanted him to convert to her religion, which was Christianity. And he said he would. And then he said he did. And they got married. Turns out he lied. He didn't actually do that. So in this case, she was able to get an annulment. Another example would be if the couple had talked about, and this is all outside of Love is Blind, if the couple had talked about having kids beforehand and they both wanted kids and that was their intention and one of them after the wedding decides, oh, actually I never intended to have kids. I just said that to get you to marry me. That would also be a good enough reason for an annulment. But when the lawyer was asked about what about Love is Blind, Unfortunately, there's really not enough reason or good enough reason, should I say, for a judge to be able to grant an annulment to any of them because everything in it is real. 
You know what you're getting yourself into. It was publicized. You're going to have to get a divorce. Also, another thing that I forgot to mention about the annulments is while a divorce stays on your record, I don't know another way to word that, an annulment just completely wipes it clean as if you've never been married before. Okay, let's talk editing. Now, obviously, we all hate the gold cups, but we know why they use them. They use them because they're opaque, so even when they're drinking, we can't track where their drinks were and where they are compared to the editing to see if something was actually edited. Now, a really good example came out this season, and I know I actually talked about it in one of my TikToks. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen any of the season four episodes. So when Zach was going to propose to Arena, he said, Arena, I wrote you a song, and then proceeded to sing the song that he wrote for her. Now, when this episode was aired, a bunch of people caught on that it was actually a song written by a pretty well-known band, and everyone accused Zach of stealing this song to sing to Irina and just being really sleazy about it. Now, as we all remember, Zach is a lawyer. Zach came with the receipts. He posted a TikTok, which I will show the full TikTok after we talk about it, but Zach showed the full clip of what happened. He said in the pod, Arena, I wrote you a song. Well, okay, it's not my song. It's actually a song by one of my favorite bands. I just switched some of the words around to sing to you. Hey guys, it's Zach from Love is Blind here. And there has been a scandal surrounding me. Zach Witowski, the plagiarist, the thief. They started from some well-intended fans of my uh, of one of my favorite bands, and uh, it's kind of snowballed. I uh, have for you here exclusive, never before seen footage from uh, the pods in one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. But not because I plagiarized the song. Here's the footage. I wrote you a song. Aww. It's not an original. It's a. It's a. Well, it's I'll one take of my. Yet. One of my favorite songs uh, from one of my favorite bands, uh, but I have uh, <laughs> changed around the lyrics a little bit for you. Okay. Check out Ludo. Uh, They're a phenomenal band, and they have really great music. It's one of my favorite bands. Oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I uh, have some more receipts too. Now, if that is not enough reason to not believe anything you see in these reality shows, I don't know what is. But not that he'll ever see it, but I do want to say I am so sorry for all of the hate that you got online just because the producers decided to edit that out to make you look like a sleazeball. And the last thing that I want to touch on is the petition to remove Nick and Vanessa Lachey as the hosts of Love is Blind. Now, in the first couple of seasons, I really liked them. I think they're a sweet couple. I think they're so precious. They seem really good together, and they were really good on the ultimatum too. And for this last season, it really seemed like they were not there as much. I don't want to say detached because that sounds bad, but they weren't there as much. We saw them in the beginning, and then I think the next time we saw them was when Vanessa went to the girls' dress fittings and Nick went to the guys' suit fittings. But there is actually a petition to get them removed because they focus too much on themselves, their personal experiences, and their personal lives. If you go back and watch any of the reunions or even the first and second season, you'll notice that they talk about themselves a lot, which I get, but they've also never been in this kind of experience before. So they really have no idea what it's like to be in those pods and not be able to see anybody, not know anybody and have to fall in love and get engaged within 10 days. Now, I do want to say that the producers actually come out to say that nobody has to get engaged. It is all up to them, which is a pretty risky move. For a producer in this kind of situation because say nobody finds somebody that they fall in love with, there's no rest of the show. That's it. That's done. I guess that's really the only good thing about the production. Now, when I was watching the reunion, first of all, Netflix, you really fumbled the reunion being live. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really know if it was going to work. 
my boyfriend was pretty set on it not actually happening live. And sure enough, he was right. I sat on their Instagram live waiting for something for an hour and a half. Now, I was doing other things in between this. It's not like I was sitting there strictly watching this Instagram live. But was anybody else on that Instagram live? Did anybody else see like MTV and eBay and the Cheesecake Factory? I am telling you, whoever is running these social media accounts of these corporate, you know, big companies, I hope they are being paid so well because I have never been so interested in companies' social media before, especially Duolingo. Duolingo is wildin' out here. Other people's comment section, like on TikTok, I hope they're making so much money. Watching the reunion, I feel like I got all of my questions answered. Obviously, I'm sure some of them held back because I'm sure the producers were like, don't say this, don't say this say this instead, whatever. But a lot of people feel like they literally didn't get anything from their reunion, but I personally enjoyed it. The majority of it. One thing that a lot of people are very upset about and are pretty much demanding an apology from Vanessa Lachey is for her baby comments. So if you watch the reunion, you'll hear that she made a comment of, oh, I want a fourth baby so bad and Nick Lachey just shut that down so fast. So while it does kind of make sense for her to be like, I want to love his blind baby, going around and asking the room, are you trying? Are you trying? What about you? Are you trying? When do you plan on having babies? Are you going to have a baby? What's the baby's name going to be? Oh, think about the Air Force Ones on the babies. Obviously, the show is already very personal and sometimes TMI. And I know that's why we all love it. But a lot of people are upset because some people can't have children or don't want children. And that's not something that should be aired on live TV. And I absolutely agree with that. I, that little segment that she had was so uncomfortable. And as of filming, Vanessa and Nick have not come out to say anything about it. Hopefully, there will be some kind of apology or some kind of rule set in place that you don't go around and ask each couple when they plan on having kids or if they're trying to have kids right now. The other thing that I didn't like in the reunion, and this just really irked me, but it was the way that Vanessa responded to Marshall's response to Vanessa having that like video interview with Jackie and Josh. Now, in my opinion, it really seemed like Vanessa was just taking Jackie's side 100%. Like, I'm a girl's girl. I'm always going to take the girl's side. But like at this point, to be honest, I would not want to take any of those girls' sides except Bliss and Tiffany. I loved them. They were the stars of the show. Back to Vanessa and Marshall. Now, as someone who has the memory of a goldfish, I can't remember what I said 20 minutes ago, let alone I can't even imagine trying to remember everything that was said in an interview that you were watching in front of a live audience with things being said about you that were allegedly, in Marshall's opinion, not true. So the way that Vanessa just reacted to him and being like, oh, okay, well, let me break it down for you since you don't remember what she watched five minutes ago. It was just really rude and it it hurt my feelings. Obviously, Marshall was completely blindsided by everything that Jackie said. Um, if you didn't watch the reunion or you don't want to watch the reunion, there are some spoilers. I'll be ready, but I'm going to say them. Obviously, Jackie and Josh are currently together and Jackie said a few things that were a little controversial. Jackie said that Marshall wanted the ring back. Because he wanted to propose to another cast member on the show that wasn't featured. She also claimed that Marshall called her a derogatory term and then never apologized for it. And she also said that they had both talked about already knowing that they were going to say no once they got to the altar. Now, if you watch the reunion, you will see that this completely threw Marshall off all of the edits going along to the You Went Where With Who song. Keep them coming. I don't care how many times I've watched them. I'm going to watch them all again. 
So then when Vanessa starts to grill him about it, you know, he says, no, I didn't want the ring back because I was going to propose to somebody else. Like that ring was a symbol of my love and I don't feel like she deserves to keep a symbol of my love when she's already dating somebody else. He also claimed that the derogatory term that he had used towards Jackie was in a joking manner that had gotten too far. And then he also said that he had no idea that Jackie had already planned on saying no at the altar. He said at that point, he really didn't know what he was going to say. And he felt like the opportunity to be up at the altar and really make that decision was taken away from him. And I absolutely agree. But at the same time, I think it was for the better that they ended things before going to the altar. Now, Jackie letting him go to the suit fitting, knowing she was going to break up with him for Josh. Jackie's already on my shit list, so I wasn't really surprised, but that was a really low move, even for Jackie. Another point that was brought up in Jackie and Vanessa's interview was that she had broken up with Marshall before she went out with Josh. Now, while that may be true, Marshall did make a good point that even if that did happen, you were engaged to somebody and getting ready to go to the altar with somebody. And then two days later, if that, honestly, I think he might just be giving her a little bit of leeway, in my opinion. Two days later, you're already dating and kissing on another guy. I personally think there was probably a lot more to that, but that's for a different story. But the way that Vanessa responded to all of this was even towards the end, she still made it seem as though she was on Jackie's side and she didn't believe a word Marshall said. Now, watching a couple TikToks, uh, the comment section seemed to think that maybe Vanessa had a little bit too much to drink and that's why she was so fiery that night. I don't know that we'll ever know that. Hopefully, she does come out with an apology for the way she treated Marshall and for the baby making comments. Now, as much as I would love to say that if there is another season of Love is Blind, I won't be watching it due to the production and the ethics behind it. I probably will. It still is a really entertaining show. And maybe now that this is all coming out, maybe Netflix will start paying the cast members more and start treating them with a little bit more respect instead of treating them like literal zoo animals. So what do you guys think? Did you watch Love is Blind? What were some of your thoughts? Did you know any of this already? Because I had no idea how shady the producers and crew members of Love is Blind were. Netflix, I really hope you get your shit together and not only not do another live event and promise your viewers that it's going to be a live reunion, but also make sure that whatever production company you are hiring to do your Netflix exclusive shows are treating their cast members with respect and honestly treating them like humans and not animals. Like I said, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. If you did like this video, it does help out my small channel. We have finally hit a thousand followers, so that's so exciting. All of my resources and my personal social media handles will be in the description box below. And I'll see you in the next one.